Most people in life are looking for how do I make a life worth living or term with having. When I'm seated doing my work, it's always amazing how many people want to play by, but they don't have a lot to say. It's always amazing also how one panhandler leaves and another one then arrives. And maybe they're a part of a family today, I can't say. When we think about the Hispanic networks, what we know is that people who speak the same language usually have a network. But the differences in countries and nationalities and ethnicities and kind of social order make it very different than Asian countries that I'm accustomed to dealing with. You see, in Japan, everyone is related by their company. And therefore, even if a child is used to playing with another child from a different company on the playground every day, if he has a birthday party, that little child who's not a part of the company is rarely invited. You see, it's not about how it looks per se, but it's about company loyalty. So you got a kid suffering for a company's society. In Mexican networks, all I know is what I've observed, that gossip pretty much doesn't preserve. Gossip hurts people, and gossip puts people at risk. Liars of America don't do their jobs well. I can talk about the person that I keep seeing and what they're doing, and I can make those observations as a journalist, that what I see is a total lack of integrity in a position that should be really simple, that shouldn't take more than maybe a half an hour to an hour. But what I'm seeing is someone abusing their company, what I'm seeing someone doing is being pretty lazy. What I'm seeing someone doing is actually being paid on the job to sit in a parking lot talking on their telephone to, I don't know, their wife, their child, who knows. But what I fail to see is a person of integrity, and that creates cultural generalization. You see, what we have are stereotypes of different types of people, like Ricky Ricardo and Lucille Ball, who did a marvelous television show to kind of educate us on different types of people and different types of entertainers and that kind of tumultuous relationship that I guess has recently been captured by someone else. And I didn't get to see the movie because I sort of made the decision that after watching some 4,000 films in my life, I might not have to run out and see the new film. Now, if there may be a new Harry Potter come to life, then maybe I would, because I did like that version of magic in the world. But what I know about people is that people are marvelous liars. I had a woman named Tabika come and see me a few times, and last weekend, or the weekend before, she came back to see me, and she promised she'd come and see me on Saturday. She never came back. And then I had a gal tonight come up and talk to me and remind me that I had helped her when she was picking up a TV at Best Buy, and she tried to give me some water or something to drink, even offer me alcohol right there on the street, like, no thank you, I'm okay. But the reality is that she promised she'd come back a few hours later and hours have gone by and I haven't seen her yet. So you see, we have to understand what our impact on our life and other people's lives are like. Our personal brand is what we do for people. Our professional brand is how we serve other people, serve companies, serve our internal clients, meaning our colleagues and our other fellow employees, and our external clients are the people that we serve that help the company to make money. You see, it doesn't matter whether you're an accountant or a school teacher, there's always a client out there. It might be a community person who's a president of a company, but when we go to do our event, we need somebody to purchase an ad in our little publication for the kids, and the person we want to talk to, we might not have a relationship with. But in life, we have most of the time to speak the truth. And when we speak the truth, we have to speak the truth about society. Oftentimes, white men think that a person who is homeless, like me, has gotten there through dereliction, drugs, alcohol, or something, and that's not true. I'm in this position because someone took advantage of a downturn in my life when I lost my wife. And they decided to pursue me and interfere with every aspect of my life, my federally protected life. They stole my mail from my mailbox. They took things from my home. They played around in my bathroom, moving things around. They actually moved things that I had set up in my own organization. And even as of yesterday, a person had gotten into my bags, moved my underwear into a different pouch, which I didn't put them there. And I'm thinking, who the hell is touching a man's underpants? You see, people like to be nosy, people like to find out who people are, but they don't have a lawful right to ever put their hands in your pocket or even in your wallet. 
I even had things that I threw away in a trash can come back to be put inside my wallet. I've had buttons that I've thrown away from a marvelous shirt I used to have that someone cut off, actually, without my consent, come back into my bags just recently, which show me that the person who did it is hell-bent on being a nuisance, a stalker, a mobber. I don't like it, but how do I stop it? You see, in life, if I told you every single thing that I've noticed about what's happening to my property, what's happening to the things I purchased, like my bungee cord, somebody's actually using scissors to make my bungee cords not work as well. Someone is actually shaving them at the end so that they'll fray and pop off. I do not walk into your house or into your car and ruin and vandalize your things. But people in a negative or black satanic network can do those things. A person of Satan is often considered black or of the dark, which means they have chosen to follow Satan. Satan is an usurper. Satan is an aggressor. Satan is someone who likes to be an antagonist to a life. Antagonists to other people's lives rarely survive their antagonism because at some point somebody turns around and smacks them with and what they end up usually doing is going too far. And it's usually about a power trip. It's usually they're trying to be in power over someone that they have no power over, that they don't have any real lawful rights to. So as we talk this way through, we have to really think about where do your rights begin and end today? What do you have the rights to do? What do you not have the rights to do in your employment house? Are you being rude without thinking about it because your mind works so fast, but your employers work so slow? In life, we have months of time to help raise people up. I used to go to a networking event where the woman would always talk after people, making people kind of look stupid after they spoke. She should have been doing is complimenting what they said, adding to what they were doing, not at all, but just simply saying, hey, tell me a little bit more about this. Let everybody know more about that and allowing them to have a chance to impress other people.